Okay, we're getting... Actually, he's working. He's working his magic. Hi, guys. I know it's early. Um, <laughs> Joanna, get yourself a headset. <laughs> get yourself mic'd up. <laughs> yeah? Everyone. Come. Women. Women in crypto. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have an audience, thank God. <laughs> cool. Uh, has everyone, should I just sit? Okay. Huh? I'll go back, I'll go back. So, um, should I start? I'm doing this for the content. Okay, so hi guys. Um, my name is Zoe. Um, I am one of the co-founders of Crypto Girls Club. Uh, we are Germany's uh, largest women in Web3 community uh, based in Berlin um, and outside of Europe. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about today uh, solving the existential crisis of NFTs um, and the lessons from our membership launch, which we launched during Berlin Blockchain Week last week on the 12th, um, and a little bit of lessons learned um, from that. So that's the, the agenda for today. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a bit of an OG in crypto. I call myself an accidental OG because I fell into the space around six years ago. Uh, started off in fintech, realized that fintech is kind of a bit boring. Um, and was really, really um, interested by the advancement of Bitcoin technology. Um, I worked for a crypto bank called Bitwala uh, for three years and then moved to a centralized exchange. On the side, I really advocated diversity in the space, uh, mainly because there was a lack of women. Uh, when you were, whenever you went to a Bitcoin stamtish, I was the only woman in the room. We need to change this. And that was how Crypto Girls Club was born. So, um, yeah, two years later, we're about 2000 members. Um, and we've launched our NFT project just to advocate for more uh, ambassadors in the, in the space and in our community. So, uh, okay, so this is typically everyone's story or whenever I go to an NFT conference, they always talk about Pokemon cards. Um, for me, this was actually a case. That's actually a Yu-Gi-Oh card in the mi middle. Um, <laughs> this is actually the case for me. Um, I, when I was 12 years old, I got myself hands on a rare shiny Charizard. Um, and then three weeks later, it got stolen from a boy at school. Um, so this was my future of NFTs um, and the preemptively uh, led to this. So 20 years later, I'm glad we have a World of Women uh, worker in the background because I put World of Women in my presentation, Joanna. 20 years later, I ended up being an advocate for collecting NFTs such as uh, CryptoPunks, World of Women and our very own Crypto Girls Club NFTs. So I think the big question is why? Why did we, how did we get here? Um, why did PFPs project themselves in the 2021 uh, or 2022 bull run? Um, a lot of questions uh, about this. Um, and for those of you that don't know what NFTs are, I think you do because you're on the Web3 stage. Um, it is a non-fungible token, a unit of data uh, that links to a piece of digital art, music, video, and can be bought or sold. Um, so yeah, 2021. Everyone's talking about NFTs. Great, good, good job. Why are they talking about NFTs? Um, because it's, it's a hype, right? It's a trend. Fast forward to 2022. Um, for example, you see wash trading is basically when you ma manipulate the market to buy NFTs. Um, and we see this you know, it significantly increase uh, when we hit January 2022. Um, NFT trading, this is Ethereum. I've heard that actually Solana is reaching an all-time high in trading activity recently. Um, but with Ethereum uh, and NFT marketplaces, the volume peaked uh, in early 2022. Um, so things don't look good right now. Um, judging by this and, and many others in the space, I think um, it, can, it can be safely said that launching an NFT project during a bear market was a bold and brave move. Um, so yeah, who here believes that NFTs, I, I mean, this is a statement really, but like, do you believe in this statement? Do you believe that NFTs are going through an existential crisis? Do they know who they are yet? Do they, have they found their, their, their home in life? Okay, yeah, jo Joanna, Joanna agrees. Yeah, I think everyone agrees. NFTs are definitely, um, yeah, existentially, what the hell. <laughs> um, my favorite example of this is like the best meme ever on Discord. Um, and it comes from, I think it was just an NFT project back in uh, 2022. Uh, so they sold out immediately. Um, and then a few minutes later, one of the founders died right during the mint. 
Um, and in this regard, the project is being sold, uh, ready to transfer all rights, passwords and wallets to the new owner. Um, so this is just showing the state of affairs when it comes to NFT projects. A lot of rug pulls, a lot of scams. I'm not sure if the owner died, but I wish him all the best in his future endeavors. Um, so are we ever going to financially recover from this? Um, is this something that is look optimistic um, for me? Yes, I believe that membership NFTs can fix this. Um, may, or memberships and teams are the future um, and I'll talk about the Crypto Girls Club membership uh, and some use cases in the space which uh, argue this. So, uh, utility done right. So, for example, Pudgy Penguins. I'll briefly go over why Pudgy Penguins are my favourite. Um, they've successfully closed partnerships with, for example, producing toys that uh, holders own the rights to. Um, and uh, NFT holders have the opportunity to sign licensing deals to bring their pudgy penguins to life. So this is a case success of a membership uh, done right. Um, we also have Nike for brand loyalty. Um, on stage yesterday there was Jägermeister, which I think has done some pretty cool events as well in the space, which was a nice presentation. Um, but Nike's Crypto Kicks also uh, offered more than just uh, you know a trainer, but uh, uh, an opportunity to enter the metaverse and exclusive product launches. Uh, so here's a couple of uh, two products which were launched during the bet bull market. So totally different to Crypto Girls Club. <laughs> um, and then we have, it's not working, Crypto Girls Club. So uh, last week was a huge, huge milestone, uh, like probably the biggest um, event that the club has done in the two year history. Um, what did we do? Um, we launched our NFT project. Um, so a little bit of background interest it, it, info about us. We are advocating for diversity and inclusion. Um, we hosted 50 events across Europe um, and we've demonstrated a real you know, strong track record of delivering value to our community. This was before NFTs, this was you know, before the membership. We are in, in real and online, um, but we've yeah, educated, inspired women um, with a simple mission of empowering, mentoring, propelling uh, women into leadership roles within uh, the, the Web3 and AI industries now, because AI is a hot topic. Um, some pictures of what we do, so my favorite ones. Um, so we have lots of partnerships and uh, with some names in the space that enable us to you know, host these awesome events. Um, yeah, meetups uh, mainly in Berlin, but in London and, and Paris as well recently. Um, yeah, just a really like tight knit group of people uh, that want to, uh, you know, feel secure in Web3. And what better way than Crypto Girls Club? Um, yeah, so last week our membership passes on Polygon. How beautiful is the art? <laughs> um, yeah. So why did we decide to launch our NFT membership? So I was looking at, we also have the t-shirt there. Um, so there are three reasons or four reasons here. Uh, number one, uh, we can easily, you know, unlock access via the smart contract address. So when a member buys an NFT uh, through OpenSea or through our website, uh, they can get access to the Discord um, quite easily uh, online and then they have access to all our perks uh, that bring. We're going to bring this to the website very soon. Um, an NFT is truly unique. So, I mean, we live and we die by crypto. So. Um, it's important to have something like with ownership and they can, uh, you know, it's something tangible in their wallets. Um, and we wanted new revenue streams for the club. I think um, with a community that isn't focused on revenue, uh, this is the key of a membership NFTs. So I think bringing new revenue streams and new ways to monetize community is one of the reasons why I think membership NFTs uh, will succeed in the space moving forward. Cool. I'm having problems with it. Okay, so what does our memberships offer? You get free and discounted courses and conferences in Web3. Uh, for example, we gave away two free tickets to Web3 uh, Vision, thanks to Web3 Vision for being awesome partners, uh, but you can only unlock access or the conference by, uh, by buying a membership. Um, we have a mentors uh, mentorship program, so we've connected with uh, the brightest minds or the brightest women in the space. Um, we learned this through asking our community, um, do you have a friend in the space? Do you have a, a leader or a guidance? And I think the biggest use case was our front end developer who was doing things for the first time and realized that they needed someone just to, you know, check that everything, you know, check ev just, just to have a, a, a guiding hand. Um, we also have community grants, so your eligibility for community grants and access to co-working spaces online and in real. So um, we're really big on offering in real experiences, but we know that NFTs are digital, right? 
Um, this way we have access to co-working spaces in Berlin and Hamburg, but also on our metaverse. So we've partnered up with um, Third Academy to offer metaverse experiences where you can co-work together in the metaverse as well. So offering that online and offline experience, um, which is basically what Crypto Girls Club is all about. Um, and yeah, we're bringing more and more perks. We just launched them last week. So we're, we're, we're adding to this uh, like growing list, I think of 50 partners. Um, and yeah, looking forward to more collaborations. Uh, next. It's a bit sticky today, what happened? Okay, here are our mentors. Uh, so once you buy a Crypto Girls Club NFT, uh, you unlock our mentorship program. Um, basically you get one-on-one -on -one uh, offers with, uh, well not offers, one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with founders, developers and executives uh, in the crypto space, uh, ranging from a wide range of tech backgrounds to DeFi to NFTs uh, to music NFTs. So um, yeah, this is basically, I mean, the list, list, team of list developers and yeah, lots of, uh, these are all community members and these are all organically offered their help anyway. Um, and I think that's what makes Crypto Girls Club really special is that we built this community and people naturally want to help. People want their support. There's no, uh, you know, um, you do this and we, we do that. Everyone is working together almost like a DAO, but we're not a DAO. Okay. <laughs> What else do we do? So I mentioned the metaverse space. This is what the metaverse looks like. This is our website from the metaverse. Um, yeah, we've partnered up with um, uh, Third Academy, like I said, um, to provide uh, webinars and one-on-one -on -one mentorship experiences inside the metaverse. Um, and that's me walking around with, yeah, with, with, in one of the sessions. Um, this is what it looks like in the back end. Right now we're working on bringing this to the website, um, but this is when you unlock uh, access or when you have the smart contract address, uh, you just press a button in Discord, you get access to all the uh, conferences, mentorship programs and yeah, membership offers. So yeah, really, really, really cool. We've had a lot of feedback and we're looking to grow this even more. Uh, so yeah. Um, okay, about the artist, a little bit, we skipped a bit. Um, so the artist is a Berlin-based uh, artist that we found through the community as well. It was important to have an artist that lived the community. Uh, we didn't just choose a random artist. Um, and as you can see, it is AI generated, um, but she's added her own touch. It took about six months, the entire process. And I think when you're doing an NFT project, artwork is really, really important, even if you are a membership utility. Um, and the reason why we did the more human, we had, a, we had ideas of a membership card, we had you know, back and forth ideas of um, having a um, sort of monolith or like um, an inanimate object in your wallet. Uh, we changed this to a more human element. Okay, it looks a bit alien, but it is a human, um, mainly because we, we, we saw the virality effect and people were sharing it and using it as their profile picture as well. So I think, yeah, just like those monkey pictures, but definitely not a monkey picture. <laughs> Um, what's next? Uh, we're going to continue doing the things that everyone loves us for in the space. We're going to be growing our, our community, so over 2,000 members. We want to grow that to at least 5,000 members. Um, move access to the perks from the Discord that I just showed you to the website uh, for accessibility because we are catering for absolute beginners in the space that might not like Discord. I think there's a lot of people that don't like Discord for various reasons. It's, it's noisy, it's, there's too much. I think during the bull run, I had about 50 channels uh, annoying me all day, so that needs to change a bit. Um, and we want to onboard more partners and perks for our community. Cool, so here are my lessons that I learned through the NFT Mint. It's only been a week. Um, can I calculate the success of it? It's, it's ongoing, um, but yeah. I think the, fir the first one is find your evangel evangelists. So what was really, really good about launching the product or the project um, is that we found our ambassadors really, really quickly. Uh, whether they were tweeting about us, whether they were reposting about us, uh, we, we, we saw this. So I think it's one way of encouraging ambassadorship. So uh, find them early and um, make sure that they, I mean, now our community members are literally invested on a deeper level. And I've noticed this as well, like when they put money towards something, they're 100% more invested than, you know, just attending events and getting involved in the community. They feel like now they own a piece of the project and that's exactly what we wanted. So that was cool. Um, the second one is choose your chain wisely. Um, with Crypto Girls Club, we're a non-profit organization um, and we rely on Polygon 
um, for support. Um, so I think um, choosing your chain, how easy it is, how accessible it is. Maybe everyone's looking like, why didn't I do Solana? Okay, there's a long story there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, Polygon is accessible. Polygon is uh, you know cheaper gas fees. Um, it's all about accessibility. So yeah, choosing your chain wisely is important. Third one, have excellent storytelling. Um, I think I was quite easy in this because I think everyone knows that Women in Web3 is, I mean, is, a, is it a story? It's, um, it's definitely an issue that uh, is light in the space and I think a lot of people talk about it. There's a lot of discussion. So I had this one pretty easy, um, but yeah, just make sure your story really resonates with your members uh, in the space and the reason why you have the community. Uh, that's also important. The fourth one is timing is every, everything. Um, we didn't sell out, so I think everyone here can buy one right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are, like I said uh, in the previous slides, we are in a bear market. I'm not going to go on about you know this, the, the, the exit into crisis and how we get through this. Um, we're here for the long-term run game. We set up the technology to help us in the next uh, bull run. But this isn't about you know profits. This isn't about monetization. This is about making sure that we can secure membership for our community managers and, you know, um, make them accessible in, in the future. So timing is kind of everything. Um, we launched during during Berlin Blockchain Week, which was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, if I could do it all over again, probably uh, should have done it two years ago. But there's no uh, shoulda, coulda, wouldas in crypto. You, either the timing is now or never. So yeah, just go, just go all in. Um, give people what they want. Um, yeah, you might have all the ideas, but I think if you really know your community, you know exactly, you've been speaking to them a lot, you've been listening to them, you know exactly um, you know what, what to give them. And I think I should have taken on feedback a bit earlier instead of being like, oh, there's a, there's a cool partner, let's do this. I think like really like listening and, and, and getting, um, getting the feedback on board. And then the last one, yeah, we're still early. We're still super, super early. The technology, we had so many uh, technical issues on the launch day. Um, even though we had the most simple infrastructure, if you go to our website, you can buy the NFT with a debit card. You can literally buy the NFT with one click using your email address. We thought, okay, this is foolproof. This is surefire. We still had so many technical issues, um, mainly because I mean, I got this from one of the founders of our infrastructure partner. We're just still early and the UX isn't there in Web3. I don't think that's an excuse. I think that's a, um, a reason to build better. And yeah, just, just don't give up, okay? Even though the space is new and young, um, the tech is also new and young. So that was a, that was a learning. Um, okay, so do I think it's the future? Do I think membership NFTs are the future? Do I think we can see them in schools? For example, if you get an A grade on your coursework, do you get an NFT for, for getting top marks? Um, when you go to a rave, and I've actually seen this, you get a, a pop-up for attending the rave um, or keeping your friends safe. I don't know. <laughs> or like, uh, you know, my, my mum's favorite book club. Will my mum be using NFTs uh, when she you know, visits her, her friends around her house and uh, they, they, they successfully read a book? I don't know if we're there yet, uh, but I think the future is very bright for membership NFTs. Um, and yeah, I'm hopeful for development. Um, so I have one t-shirt here. Uh, that left that I want to give away um, but the question is would we do it again um, and if you find me and ask me this question uh, you can get a t-shirt so just ask me and have a conversation because I'm not gonna talk about it right now but thank you <laughs> that's it <laughs> thank you okay